Hi everybody, I'm the Drink Pro, and today we're sampling Nika Takasuru Pure Malt. What's up everybody? Thanks for joining me again, the Drink Pro here, for another Sample Sunday. I hope you all have been enjoying your week and are going to make the most of a Sunday evening. I've got a special pour sampled today from a good friend of mine, Nate Cooper. Shout out, Nate. This is Nika Takasuru. I think it's Takasuru, if I wanted to say it properly, but Takasuru is fine for the Americanized version. The Nika Takasuru is a pure malt whiskey. So that means it's 100% malted barley that went into the mash bill. And they've proofed it down to 86 proof. Nika Takasuru is named after the founder of Nika, Masataka Takasuru. I hope I'm saying that right. He was the grandfather and the originator, really, of Japanese whiskey. So this malt being named in his honor uh, should be pretty good, let's hope. I think this is the one without the age statement. There are two with age statements. But I don't have the label because this is just a sample, and I didn't know what questions to ask to get the right information on the label. That's going to happen a lot. Sometimes you won't know exactly what you're sampling when you are doing samples and sharing samples. That's okay. Part of it is just enjoying the experience. And you learn questions that you might ask in the future. I would have never known to ask about the different types of Takasuru, uh, even though they're all pure malt. Some of them are age stated and some of them are not. So it's good to think about the kinds of questions you can develop in the future to expand your knowledge base about whiskey and drinks in general. Now, I'm kind of excited about this one. I've had a lot of Japanese whiskeys that smell very soft and gentle, but just nosing the, um, the little sample bottle here, it smells a whole lot like a scotch. Shout out uh, Nate Cooper for filling that bottle so damn full. <laughs> I had to save some of that whiskey um, in an embarrassing way. Oh no, it was so full. Ah, save it, save it. <laughs> I don't waste a drop of whiskey, guys, but it's worth it. You gotta save every drop. You gotta save every drop of whiskey, guys. Japanese whiskey is not an area I've explored very much, so I'm really looking forward to kind of opening the palate up in this field. Now, first off, on the nose, this thing smells very scotch-like. It's, it's very, um, it's floral, but it's very sweet. Pure malt whiskeys are going to be very sweet. The malted barley is a sweet flavor, but they're sweet in a different way from the corn sweetness. The corn sweetness of a corn whiskey or a bourbon is almost always going to be like brown sugar or even candy, you know, corn syrup. Very sharp sweetness. The malted barley, however, is a much more rounded sweetness and grain sweetness. It really does smell like the outdoors, like you're in a field of flowers overlooking the sea. You can really smell the ocean, and it's not salty or briny. It's very subtle, but it's there. It's got that sea breeze freshness that you get like in a candle or something. And the sweetness is wonderful on the nose. Uh, it's not very complex, though. Even though I've given you all these different interesting notes, it's a simple, easy pour. And I think sometimes people get caught up in the complexity. The complexity is interesting, but you don't always want things to be complex. You want things you enjoy. And this is just a classic, enjoyable nose. We'll see how it tastes. I get what somebody might call a stone fruit. Um, I actually get a little grapefruit, which is a weird note, and something I don't often call out. Um, very sweet honey, honeysuckle uh, initially, because it is that sweet honey, but the uh, herbal notes kind of mesh and the flower notes and the sweetness all come together, very honeysuckle. And then going back to the nose after tasting it, oh, the floral notes and the, and the herbal notes really come out. It's beautiful. I get like a geranium on the nose now, which is actually a relatively common note people don't think of, but it's in a lot of whiskeys. If you have any geraniums outside, go smell them. It might be a little cold for that yet, but... As I sit here and smell this whiskey, the woodiness is very subtle, but it's starting to come to the forefront. You get this very new oak smell, but it's not bright and sharp. It's very subtle and inviting. Like new oak that's fresh, but not freshly cut. It's It's been cut for a while, but it's not aged, it's not rotting, it's not changing characters. It's just wood at a, you know, in, in the back pile before you're gonna start a campfire or something. But I really love that honey on the nose. The sweet honey, the geranium, the bitterness. It's a delicious pour. The mid palate, you get a little bit of, um, 
little bit of a spice, uh, which I didn't expect to get any of because it's just 100% malt put in a barrel. But there is a little spice. It tingles on my tongue almost. Um, but it's only 86 proof, so I don't. It, it's not heat. It's not a hot pour. It's a tingly, spicy pour. And then at the end, there's just this little smack of your lips of, of wood. Um, it's not bitter, but it's almost a dryness. If you ever have like dry wine, you might know what I'm talking about. It's a hard thing to describe, but it's like a soft bitterness, but it's not like a cocoa bitterness. There was a study done on sommeliers that tested whether or not they could blindly pick out expensive wines and cheap wines. And a lot of sommeliers were able to pick the expensive wines, but interestingly, when they were asked what their favorite wine was, they typically chose less expensive wines. The notes they were pulling out of the more expensive pours were always complexity and to kind of takes you on a journey. But sometimes you don't want that. You know, sometimes you want a simple pour that you can enjoy the day, maybe meditate on. It's a very Eastern way of thinking. Uh, I hate to be too, you know, regional with this kind of uh, review, but that's what it makes me think of. You know, I have an affinity for that kind of mentality of peace and tranquility and calm. And you really get a sense of that with this whiskey. It's not overly complicated, but it does have a slight journey to it. But the whole time I'm drinking it, I'm enjoying it, I'm feeling comfortable, relaxed. It's a great pour. And I think it's a great way to honor the founder of the Nika Distillery. So I'm gonna keep sipping on this for a little while. Thanks again, Nate. I wanted to let you guys all know that I've got a Patreon. I'll put a link in the description, and it's a great way to find new videos and new content that I'll be putting out, but also to have a say in what whiskeys I taste next. I really appreciate the samples people send me. I know not everybody has the ability to send samples, and I think Patreon's a great way to help support the show. It's all gonna start up really on March 1st, because that's when the next cycle for billing the Patreon account begins. So I'll start posting regular content up there, uh, videos, photos, chats, discussions. I'm gonna do a monthly Q&A. There's gonna be quarterly merch for the high, one of the higher tiers. A lot of different things are gonna be offered up there. I really hope you'll consider joining. It's gonna be great, guys. I'm really looking forward to taking this journey with you. And as we walk on the journey together, let's keep drinking and knowing things. Cheers, guys.